It's hard to believe it, but March is here and it's prime seed sowing time. March and April are a really important time to start a lot of crops. So today I'm going to break down exactly what I'm starting this time of year and I'm going to break it out between things that need to be started indoors, our frost sensitive plants that we want to get started early, but they just need to stay indoors and the ones that we can direct sow in the garden in order to capitalize on the cool season, which is when most of these plants are going to be thriving. So if you've ever wondered, when should I start this or that? This is going to definitely help you have a much clearer idea of what you can be sowing right now, both inside and outside during March and April, regardless of what gardening zone you're in. gardening zones just real fast. So your zone has actually more to do with your average highs and low temperatures than it does your frost dates. And when we're talking about planting, frost dates are actually a much more useful way to gauge when we should be starting our plants. So rather than focusing so much on what zone you're in, instead look at your last frost date. That's going to be the more important date for you to have in your head. For instance, now that we're here in zone eight in Washington state, we actually follow a very similar planting schedule to what we did in Idaho in zone six. So that's two zones different, yet our frost dates are almost identical. So it hasn't really affected when we're planting things. So what we really want to be looking at are the average temperatures that we're experiencing and when our last frost date is expected to be to have kind of a way to earmark when we'll be moving from the cool gardening season that we're in now into the warm gardening season of summertime. So I like to consider this the cool garden season. And that means that we're basically in this time frame. And for a lot of people, this actually starts mid-February and usually goes until about early May. And this is the time of year when our days are starting to warm up. We're getting into the 40s and 60s consistently, but we still have overnight lows that get pretty darn chilly. And we even have frost and some occasional snowfall. So this is the cool gardening season and all of the crops that we're going to be talking about today are going to be able to still be sown during this time of year, even though you're still getting frost at night. So let's start out by talking about which crops you are going to want to sow now in March or April, but you're not necessarily going to plant them out until summertime. It's super important that you go ahead and start these crops, even though they can't go outside yet, they're going to need to get a head start. In most regions, we just don't have a long enough growing season to simply plant them directly in the garden once the temperatures warm up. So we have to start them early and we have to start them inside. So what are those crops? Let's talk about it. So the first ones that you're going to want to get started, if you haven't yet, are your nightshades. So your peppers, your tomatoes, your eggplants, all of these on average will take anywhere from 80 to 120 days to go from seed to producing fruit. So that means you got to start them early. If you haven't done it yet, March or April is a great time to get these started. On the back of most packages, it'll say to start them about six to eight weeks before your last frost. And for us, we start them even earlier than that. I found that it just helps to have a couple of extra weeks on that. So mine are already started, but if you haven't started yours, don't worry, there's still time, but go ahead and get those sewn and just make sure you keep them inside where they're going to be protected. And then after your last frost, that's mid-May here for us, but after your last frost, you're gonna wanna go ahead and transplant them out at that time. So keep in mind, you might have to transplant them up into bigger pots a couple of times until then to give them enough growing space if you're starting them now. Next is your squash family. So that's your melons, your cucumbers, your zucchini, all of that, your pumpkins, winter squashes, summer squashes, all of those can actually be started in April. So I like to start mine about four weeks before our last frost. So about a month ahead of time. So usually I'm sowing those again indoors. I start them inside in a nice safe area because they are very sensitive to frost. So I start them inside about a month before our last frost. These guys grow really, really fast. So they don't need as long as like the tomatoes and peppers and things like that. But you can definitely give them a jump start to get them just a little bit more mature to plant them outside. 
Now, alternately, you could just go ahead and direct sow these in the ground. They do produce a harvest much faster than like say a tomato or a pepper. Most of them are somewhere between, you know, 70 to 80 days on average for most of these crops. So you do have time in your growing season. Usually if you want to direct sow these outside, that's an option. But if you want to start them early in March or April, you can do that as well. The other thing that you can start early are some of your herbs. So some of our herbs are very frost tender. So that's like your dill, your savory, basil, tulsi, lemongrass, things like that. So this is a little lemon balm here. Um, so you might wanna start those early as well so that you can have a little baby seedling that's all ready to go outside. Alternately, again, you can go ahead and sow them directly in the ground once your last frost date has passed but this is gonna give you a jump on the season. So I like to start a lot of my frost sensitive herbs early as well. And I'll usually start them anywhere from the end of March into mid April. Now's also a good time to start a lot of your flowers. So you can never have to make flowers, right? But there definitely are some frost sensitive ones that you can start now and then use them as companions in your garden. For instance, zinnias, cosmos, alyssum, nasturtium. You can start all of those about four to six weeks ahead of time. So for me, I start those in April. And then sunflowers as well. I'll also start those about the same time so that my flowers also have a jump on the season and we get blooms a little bit sooner that way, which helps to attract pollinators. And frankly, it just makes your garden so much prettier when you have flowers intermixed. So what about in the garden? There's actually a lot of plants that we can be sowing right now directly from seed in our garden beds. And in fact, most cold hardy crops actually prefer this season. So a lot of crops like carrots and peas actually require cool, dark, damp soil to properly germinate. So we're actually going to have better germination on some of these crops if we're planting them early and planting them directly out into our garden this time of year. So let's talk about some crops that we can be planting right now in our gardens. Onions are the first one. This is a perfect time of year to plant onions. They're cold hardy, and whether you're starting them from seed or you're starting them from sets or bulbs, now is the perfect time to get them planted. You can see I've got these giant leeks back here and they've actually been growing all winter long. And now they're starting to take off in these warmer temperatures. Most onions are incredibly cold hardy and will do just fine through any frost that you have at this time of year. Peas. So peas are one of the earliest crops that you can plant. And in many areas, you can actually plant them out in February. Peas need cool, dark, damp soil to germinate, which is why they're going to germinate best this time of year. And they don't love heat. So by the time your temperatures are warming up into the 80s, they're about done with their season. So you wanna get them started as early as possible. It's also time to plant our brassica crops. So in the brassica family, we have a lot of our staple cold crops. So we have our cabbages, we have our broccoli, our cauliflower, kale, um, Brussels sprouts. These are all going to be in the same plant family, which means that they all have really similar growing conditions. And lucky for us, they're very cold hardy. So you can actually sow these directly in your garden now. Fava beans are perfect to plant this time of year. They also enjoy the nice cool weather. So you're gonna wanna sow them as early as you possibly can. I like to sow mine the same time that I do my peas. They take a long time to mature too. So the sooner you get them started, the better. March is a great time to do it. Root crops like, <coughs> root crops like beets, carrots, parsnips, radishes are all perfect to be sown this time of year. They don't mind the cold temperatures and will actually do much better. In fact, a lot of them need the cooler soil in order to germinate properly. They are cool crops, so this is their season. Get them planted now. Now is also a good time of year to plant some cold hardy herbs, like this parsley. So parsley and cilantro do really well in cool temperatures, but so does sage. It's also a good time to start your rosemary, lavender, things like that, especially if you're starting them from seed or cutting. Now's a great time to go ahead and do that. Another herb that's my favorite and also doubles as a companion flower is calendula. And now's a great time to go ahead and direct sow your calendula seeds. Garlic. If you miss out on fall planted garlic, you can still do spring planted garlic. Now the bulbs don't always get as big, especially if you plant it later in the spring season, but hey, any garlic is good garlic, right? So there's still time to go ahead and plant some garlic now. Get it in the ground though as soon as you can. 
Finally, greens. This is actually the best time of year to be growing your greens. So greens are cool season crops. And once the days get longer, they start to bolt. So if you ever get bitter greens, it's because they're just not growing at the right time of year. It's too warm and the days are too long. They usually do much better in the cool season. So if you haven't sown some greens yet, get them sown. The great thing about your greens and your lettuces is that you can get a super fast harvest. In fact, this beautiful patch of mustard greens, they're all volunteers. They started popping up in February. I've been harvesting from them using the cut and come again method for a couple of months now. And they'll continue producing super well until the temperatures warm up and the days get longer during the summertime. Springtime greens are really the best. They are so much sweeter, so much more tender. So don't wait too long. Get your greens so now they are perfect to grow in March and April and even into May. But in most areas by June and July, they're starting to lose their peak productivity. So get them started now. Mm. Stanley likes them too. I hope that this video was helpful for you. I post about twice a week. I have a tutorial usually on Tuesdays that I post and then on Friday we have our vlog where we kind of give you a behind the scenes look at the projects that we're doing and how we're developing our permaculture homestead. So be sure you hit that subscribe button so you get notified every time we post a new video. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Whoa,